All right, welcome everybody back to the Glossika channel. And on our show today, uh, we have Gabriel, and he's a, a German teacher currently living in Taiwan, uh, where Glossika is also located. I'm in Taipei, and Gabriel, you are in? I'm in Kaohsiung. It's in the southern part of the island. Yeah, so Kaohsiung is the Chinese pronunciation. If you see it on the map, it might look like Kaohsiung, <laughs> but yeah. we say Kaohsiung. And, um, so he's, uh, Gabriel is actually from Vienna in Austria. In uh, Austria so, he, yeah. so his native language, as I hope all of you can guess correctly, would be German. Okay, so. German. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there are some differences between Austrian German and, um, and the German of, of Germany, the standard of yeah, Germany. Um, but I, I actually, what we're really curious about today is uh, the extreme high level of Chinese that you've been able to achieve and your experience with uh, languages in general. And um, maybe you could touch a little bit on uh, your, uh, your experience with teaching languages and yeah, learning sure. languages. So why don't you just give us a real quick introduction to yourself and your background? Okay, so hello everyone, hello everybody. My name is Gabriel, I'm from Austria, like uh, we just said, it's uh, in Europe, it's in Central Europe. My native language is uh, German and just, you know, basically I just really like learning languages. I, uh, as long as I can remember almost, <laughs> I had some, some interest in, in languages. So before I started learning Chinese, I also actually really like to learn some French, some English, and uh, yeah, Chinese, uh, yeah, everything began very early, I would say, about the age of 17, 18 or something. Uh, I just, you know, delved into it and uh, it just was so fascinating that I, at that time, I just knew that I really want to master this thing. I just want, really want to use it for me. I just really want to have it. So yeah, that's, that's when, it, when, when it began and uh, yeah, Right now I'm 34, so you can imagine the, the time stretch. It's it's yeah, half your lots life. of time. Yes, yeah, and so so it's it's really uh, it, it has been a, a very big part of my life. Yeah. So it's taken yeah. on as as part of your identity by now. Somehow yes, because um, actually every time I learn a language or I really want to to really uh, master language, I really want to. Uh, be able to to use it almost like a native language or almost like a, like, like a native tongue because what what I really appreciate about um, having a language is to be able to to be very free to to be to be able to move very freely in that language and so that 's what I strive for so yeah i i don 't have a, a ton of different languages I can speak you know very very fluently. But uh, that's my basic goal. German is a, is a grammatically complex language, strict word order, things like that. And yes. the word, word order kind of goes all over the place, and it's, especially with those, those mean, herbs that split things up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's for some part. I know, I know. Uh, if, if my mother tongue wasn't German, I could perfectly understand this kind of, you know, confusion. But it's... On, on one on, on the on one hand, it's very uh, regular, or no, it's very complex, somewhat complex, but it's also extremely regular. So, mm -hmm. um, the moment you know uh, the regularity, it's it's very easy to be always correct. So that's, okay, so it unlocks a, yeah. a bigger part of the language. Yeah. So it's okay. I dare I dare to say I'm not a complete language expert. Okay, but. I think from my, my impression has always been that uh, if you compare it to English, English is more idiomatic. Yes. It's more, yeah. and, and, and German, the structure is, is very helpful, but also sometimes complex. So if you have the structure, you can say whatever you want. It's always correct. And then so, English, English also yeah. has those old sayings from, you know, like Middle English. Or, and and yes. those, those sayings are more, they look more like German word order. And so exactly. learning English can be challenging because sometimes you get that Germanic, you know, the old uh, stratum of, of the language in there, you know. Um, yeah. So English is, is, a, is a, it's not an easy language. Um, but 
I want to I want to get back to to Chinese, and I think mm-hmm. that for yes. a lot of our listeners out there who have not started learning Chinese yet, they're absolute beginners. Uh, one of the biggest questions that comes up is, well, we know that、um, mainland China has one style of Chinese,、uh, and people like to call it simplified, and then、mm-hmm. Taiwan has another kind called traditional, and so.、Yes. Maybe some people out there are not really understanding properly what what does、uh, simplified actually mean.、Uh, is that like a simplified version of the language? And then why did you、um, choose one or the other? And wh- you know what are, what is your、um, your suggestion to absolute beginners out there? How would you describe it to them? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. So if we just begin by you know describing the two.、Um, Versions of the Chinese script.、Uh, okay, so the traditional Chinese characters are the you know traditional ones. It, it just it it has evolved.、Um, I think historically over a very long time, and so that's when and and so those characters are is the version that is used in in. Taiwan and also in Hong Kong, and so there's also the simplified Chinese version, the simplified characters that actually also have historic roots and have a historic background. So it's it's not like completely,、uh, you know, made up、uh, as, as as far as I know. But、uh, <clears throat> in mainland China, in the People's Republic of China.、Uh, They just use the simplified version, so that's、uh, I think just that, that, that there were uh, different um, episodes or different parts of a re- re- reform of the script reform or, or a Chinese character reform.、Mm. Just they, they 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 just change it in in different waves or something, and so、uh, nowadays they just use other characters. It's a completely different, but I think.、Um, A substantial part of the of the you know written language is just different, and I don't think that the simplified form is more simple or is easier to learn. It it just <laughs> depends. It just depends. Okay. It also depends on、uh, what you would like to.、Um, what are you more interested in? For example, in, in in my case, I was always very interested in the、um, history of the characters, and just, so I I really wanted to nail down the history. Of, And、uh, so for me,、uh, very quickly, I just got more interested into the Chinese traditional、uh, characters. Yeah, so that's my my story. So, did that influence your decision to come to Taiwan, or did you actually decide to come to Taiwan based on other reasons, and then you ended up learning traditional? I think it was the other way around. Yeah,、uh, actually, I just、um, started to you know learn Chinese and.、Um, I just became very interested in Taiwan. I just really wanted to know how、um, life is like in Taiwan. How the just so curious about it. It's just an island,、um, you know, in the in the ocean, <laughs> and so and also because maybe、uh, most of the people they head to China, right? Most of them head to China, and I, I just thought, okay, maybe let's try let's try something different. Let's try something different. Let's, let's go to Taiwan and let's just see. How old is? Is it? T- how old were you the first time you came to Taiwan? Okay, how old were I? It was in two thousand and seven. I was twenty one at the time. Twenty one. And so you started your Chinese studies、uh, back in Vienna. Yeah, back in Vienna. So most. So、uh, still, for a very long time, I I also I already had lots of time to study Chinese in in Vienna in Austria. Basically, years passed by. Just just you know. Living Chinese in Vienna. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So Taiwanese taxi drivers, they always like to ask the same questions, and one of those questions is, "How long have you been in Taiwan?" And so,、um, or like, "When did you come to Taiwan?" And so, your first day or second day in Taiwan, you can already speak Chinese, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah、exactly. So, so when you answer the taxi driver, do you say, "I've been here for you know, one week or one day or something," and then they get so so amazed and. <laughs> Crazy, like at that time, yeah. At、Chinese? that time, <laughs> yeah. So that that's、uh, because it it, it wasn't. For, I have been、uh, to, to Taiwan a lot of times. Okay.、Uh, you know, t- till now, now it's、uh, it's two thousand twenty and twenty one.
but right. uh, at that time, yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was like the first day or the first month and everybody was like, wow, your Chinese is so good. Yeah, but I already had, um, you know, Chinese um, ex exposure, to, exposure to Chinese for many years. So uh, right. I think it's also different to, you know, other cases where someone goes to the country and begins from absolutely from, from scratch, from zero. So yeah, it's, right. it's, it's a little bit different. I had a lot of time and I gave myself a lot of time. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know, 17 years or something or 16 years in total of time you can, you can fill yeah. with, you know, exposure. So yeah, well, I always, either, I always like either in, in Vienna or in Taiwan. Yeah, please. I always like to remind people that Taiwan's not the only place that speaks Chinese. So have, yeah. you, have you spent any time in uh, mainland China? Yes, I have been to the, the bigger cities, Okay. Uh, you know, Beijing, Shanghai. Uh, so this is, what our, this is what our listeners yeah. really want to know, is that you learned yeah. Chinese in the, in the Taiwan style. So when you went to mainland China, how was your communication? Was it 100% no problem or, you know, what, what kind, how, how, did, how did you function? You know, that's very interesting. Actually, my, my original accent was more mainland, was more okay. northern Chinese. Because in the university, we, our teachers were mostly from China. Right. And uh, so I actually, you know, later on changed my accent also some somehow subconsciously but i changed my accent it just just happened by mm -hmm. by the years Assimil and uh yeah please assimilation with the just living locally right okay yeah exactly. i can understand yeah, yeah yeah and also because i i don't know i just i just was very happy with you know being in taiwan and uh so maybe it was a very um uh, active assimilation <laughs> i don't know i just i just yeah was uh, content with everything. I, ju I, I just wanted to absorb absorbed the, the, the way it is spoken here in Taiwan. Yeah. But I think that if you come to Taiwan speaking with a mainland, a very noticeably strong mainland accent, it, it really surprises people. They, they kind of jump back a little bit and they say, Yes. Yeah, try yeah. to ca calm it down a little bit. You know, don't, don't yeah, be so yeah, yeah, tough yeah. On, the, <laughs> on those yeah. pronunciations. So the first weeks, the first weeks, it was just. <laughs> That, that, that kind of uh, experience yeah. Yeah, in the restaurants or whatever, yeah, wherever. I just, uh, they said, oh, you sound so mainland. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think it's good to have that ability to code switch. If you go back to the mainland, you can kind of turn that accent back on if you need it. Because yeah. that's what you started with um, learning. I, I, I kind of went through a similar experience where I thought, oh, really? well, I want to be able to speak Chinese in the proper way. But because mm -hmm. I spent so much time in Taiwan, I just assimilated and mm -hmm. i feel like i could turn on the mainland accent if i needed to you know oh i see yeah it, when yeah. when i need to yeah so i don't feel yeah. like i'm completely um at a, at a loss but I, I you know i think for most people learning chinese in the beginning it's just an accent it's like you're switching between british and american uh, a mm -hmm. few words here and there are different but mm -hmm. you know for the most part you're speaking the same so yeah. let's, let's give all of our listeners a listen um, to uh, our Chinese. Let's do a, a quick question and answer oh. in Chinese. Um, maybe you can give, give a quick answer in Chinese and then kind of do more uh, detail in English. So um, okay. actually, I got Great. two questions. So my first question is uh, reading off my script here. Uh Hanhaufei 然后你的观点是什么？你对中文的文法是？So you know, um, a lot of people 
discuss does Chinese have grammar or not. You know, so. Uh, 中文当然有文法，而且非常有文法，只是文法不一样。<笑>有时候文法比我们的文法复杂很多。我觉得，我其实，我其实事实上，我拍了一个，因为我觉得这个问题太有趣了。我拍了一个，嗯，大概是十分钟的影片，在放在我的呃频道上面，我就是讨论了这个问题，我就是讨论了这个问题。嗯，我觉得。文法的系统不一样，文法的逻辑不一样，但是当然有文法。My impression has always been is that the grammar of Chinese and of German is fairly different in which respect. Okay, German is very obvious; it's like very straightforward. Like you structure like this, and that verb, blah blah blah, subject. And in Chinese, it's very, it's not obvious. It's, sometimes it's very hard to discern anything. You know, to、opaque. discern like, yeah. yeah, it's very opaque. You, you know. Uh, is is this a verb or what is the subject after all or what <laughs> or who is meant by that sentence or by that so you, or you know it's 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 sometimes so that's why、uh, it also took me a lot of time a lot of time and immense amounts、uh, of exposure to for example in all day speech、uh, in in day to day speech to understand. Very,、um, very tricky sentences where you really, because you you can't you can't learn that by by you know textbooks or even、uh, news texts or something or, or or sometimes not even by by、uh, you know movies or something.、Mm. Like sometimes it's very hard to really nail down. Okay, what is now meant by this sentence? It's very hard. So it's 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 somehow because of the grammar. Of course, it's also the, the cultural context, but but I really have to stress that、um, it's the structure that is so different, and, and it's not so clear in a, in, in some some respect. Yeah, than German because in German it's like you know you just have it everything at the surface, and and you also have to you know have, you have to provide everything on the surface. <laughs> So it's like the, it's the almost like there, it's the, almost、yeah. like you need to install a different operating system in order to express yeah, yourself,、it. right? That's it. And, and、yeah. I'm, I'm actually borrowing that from Stu J Raj because he's he's very he's a well-known polyglot、uh, in, based in Thailand, and he、uh, okay. he always talks about having that different operating system installed, not just for、That's、the、it. brain but、yeah. for the mouth as well and the exactly. composition,、exactly. and then and then you really are able to express in the local way. Yeah, that's、yeah. that's a.、Uh, So, what, what what was your biggest obstacle then、uh, in learning Chinese? Was it specifically this this、um, grammar that everybody claims doesn't exist, or is it, <laughs> or was it the characters, or was it maybe the pronunciation, or something, or maybe something else that we we wouldn't we haven't thought of yet? I thought about this, and actually, I have I one. Think... More, I have one more question. Please, because,、um, it's regarding this question. Because I think that a lot of people they compare the beginning stages of learning Chinese with the later stages of learning Chinese as、yeah. a completely different obstacle. So I'm I'm curious about that because I I personally have my own ideas about that.、Um, I、yeah. would love to know what you think. Yeah. Okay. okay. Obstacles. I think、uh, in my case I I think I don't that there, there never has been the biggest obstacle. It's it obstacle. It's Always a different obstacle. It, it, from my point of view, in my experience, it depends on the stage. Because、uh, one example, the, just right at the beginning, the tones were okay in in short amounts. <laughs> like if you had two syllables or one syllable, it sounded reasonably well. Okay, but if you had one sentence and you really wanted to utter to to, to pronounce the sentence.、Uh, In a very natural way, like the maybe the first two years, it just was completely impossible because you you have to get accustomed to, you know,、um, I don't know, to write across the to to write across the tones and to, to so that the tones fit fit in、uh, to to each other.、It's, But just like、uh, just like English or、yeah. German, there's a prosody to the whole sentence which affects all the tones as、yes. well. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I think、um, on top of that, in Chinese, you have the tones that give meaning. Yeah. In a in a more 
even more concrete way. Not not only it's not not only you know question or you know being content or being angry or something like that. It's 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 really the meaning of the word. So uh, that was very difficult at the at the beginning stages. And also reading. One example, I I, I really uh, remember this kind of uh, scenario where I sat at the table. I had a text and. Uh, after reading two or three characters, it was like, okay, that's that's very strange. And after I read, after I read one uh, sentence, I really had a um, headache. It, it was so different to to get this kind of thing into my brain. It's 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 just so, uh, and you know, at the same time, so fascinating. But you are and excited, so, right? Um, yeah, and uh, so that was a very special experience. And I think afterwards, you know, many years. Uh, when we just now go to uh, more recent years or more the more recent uh, time, I think it's more. Let's see, the biggest obstacle. Yeah, just that, just as I said, just as I, I said before, uh, some utterances in day-to-day speech that are that really discern you from almost native or. You know, I just get I just get by, but people can understand me. I think that's the, that's the, because I think that when you learn a language, at the start, it sometimes it's it's very easy somehow because you know the the most frequent five hundred words, one thousand words, you just you, you you can have them in I don't know in a relatively short amount of time. Right. Then, if you really want to get to the to the 99.6, 99.7, 99.75, 99.76 percent, and so on and so on. And 10, that, that takes more. a lot of time. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and I think we, as Navy speakers, we're not magicians. We just had so extremely, uh, you know, so much time. We had so much time to to absorb that. Yeah. And if we would, if we would use the same amount of time to absorb another language, it would look almost the same. Right. Really. So I right. think, and, and I think that most of us really, really underestimate that. We really underestimate it. So if we would really, uh, you know, give us give ourselves that kind of scenario where we just uh, let's say, okay, now I learn Chinese, for example. Okay, and I uh, I give myself this kind of exposure, it will look almost the same because your brain is just wired that way. That's that's just. Question: Do you have any um, interesting anecdotes or short stories, uh, something uh, funny or or silly that, uh, w- with uh, your uh, learning yeah. learning Chinese experience? Yeah. Okay. There are there are uh, several <laughs> stories, but I, I will just um, name a very a s- simple one. In okay. Chinese, you have me feng and for me mm. and, oh. <laughs> for, and for me it's very i don't know but sometimes uh, there are not so many so many words but this is a very uh, typical example uh, where you have the same sounds either uh, as the first and second syllable or the other way around like me feng and for me there are some other examples and yeah i don't know why for me this is very hard to, to remember and it took me it took me many years to uh i think maybe till 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 today sometimes i have to you know two? yeah i have you to, have to okay. think for a you know i don't know a tenth of a second a tenth of a second and just put it into the right order so so sometimes i i wanted to say honey but i said bees so okay. fong me is honey and me fong is a B or B. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. So, uh, so that's, do you know? Uh, do you know the ancient pronunciation for uh, honey in Chinese? No, I don't know. I know that. It's me with a with a T at the end. Me. Okay. Me. Okay. Yeah, but but etym- etymologically, the the T also evolved out of an L. So okay. you can also say meal. Oh. How do you how do you say honey in German? You say honig, honig, but Honig. how do you say it in other European languages? I know we say like miel, miel, know, yeah. right? So that's that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Did yeah. you know that this word actually is etymologically related to Indo-European wow. languages? So now you yes. have your way to remember the word because okay, miel or mi is the European word for honey, at okay. least in Slavic and so maybe some other me, languages. Yeah. <laughs> so the fong is the thing. 
that goes crazy, that buzzing, yeah. right? That crazy yeah. thing. Because in yeah. Chinese, feng also means crazy. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so that crazy thing buzzing around is the feng. Oh, so, so feng kuang, so feng crazy and feng bi is also related to each other. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just no. making a, um, a kind of an it's, association it's, between. Yeah, them. it's an association. Because, right. They're, they're, homonym, okay. they're homonyms, but you, yes. you might think like, oh, B is crazy. So it's feng, right? Yeah. And so me feng, me feng is a honey crazy, a honey bee, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then the other way around, feng me is your, is your crazy bee uh, honey. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So whatever word is at the end is is the actual noun for, for what it is. I guess the same in German grammar as well. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So there you have it. The, the me is, is actually related to, to European. And wow, if it, didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, there's, I, think, I think some researchers, they found maybe 500 or so words that are um, related with Indo-European words. It's, wow. Because the, mm -hmm. one of the earliest languages of, um, of Indo-European is called Tocharian. And it's, it was originally spoken in, in today's Xinjiang province. And so yeah, was, Xinjiang province, right? Yeah, there yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's this movement between East and West through, through that mm -hmm. corridor. And so yeah. I, th I, think, I think that there were some words that got borrowed or they mm. evolved into both areas. It, it's, yeah. it's really fascinating when you find words. Very fascinating. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for today's um, talk. And it was, uh, I hope we get a chance to do this again. Um, just to let everybody know, uh, yeah. we're doing this interview in both English and Chinese um, on each of our channels. Yes, exactly. And so uh, if you're interested in seeing the other half of the interview, go ahead and check out um, Gabriel uh, Teilt Sachen. Is that right? Did I get it right? Yes, correct. Okay, yeah, so yeah, Gabriel Teilt, T-E-I-L-T, Teilt Sachen, shares things, right? Okay, so yes. um, I'd be very interested in what you share on your channel. So I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll be checking it out as well. Welcome to, Thank yeah, you very much yeah, yeah. for your time today. Nice. And uh, yeah. we'll see Thank you, you in much. the next interview. Nice to have a chat. Okay. Yeah. See you.